We're back again. Mm -hmm. Back with another reaction video. This video is about bullies. And I think the title of the video is called How to Tell You're Being Bullied at Work. And I mean, the short answer really and truly is if someone at work does something to you that makes you feel uncomfortable repeatedly, because maybe someone will do something to you one time, in it, but if someone does something to you repeatedly, it could be your boss, or it could be one of your co-workers, one of your colleagues in that, more than likely they're bullying you. So, um, yeah, let's get into it. I ain't seen this video, so uh, this is going to be fresh for me as well. I found myself dreading going into work. As soon as I saw the door, it was like this weight just went on to me. Inside was eating you up. You see, that's the thing. Work is hard enough, you know. It's hard enough having to get up in the morning and go and work a job, more than likely a bullshit job that you don't enjoy doing. But on top of that, people them around you, bosses, co-workers and that, are making you feel uncomfortable. Fuck that, man. That's the icing on the cake, man. That's rubbing salt in the Ross Clark wounds. You cannot allow yourself to get bullied at work. Man. Um, I was smiling all the time, but it hurt. It's taken somewhere in the region of six years to be able to really regain my confidence and get myself back to my former self. You lose part of your own identity when you go through this. So what it said was uh, around one in three people in the UK have experienced workplace bullying, isn't it? Yeah. In nearly three out of the four cases, the bullying is carried out by the manager. Yeah, because the manager is an authority, so the manager feels like they can talk to their, su their inferiors, their subordinates a certain way in that. I see it all the fucking time, blood. I remember I was in Nando's in um, Enfield. So there's a Nando's in Enfield Town, but they built a newer one in Enfield Retail Park. Like their B&Q and Krispy Kreme and that. And I remember one time I was in there and I was just ordering some food and that. And I don't know, some Eastern European woman, she had, she, she was a manager. And the way she was talking to one of the workers and that, she's just giving him bad attitudes. And I thought to myself, you wouldn't talk to your boss like that. So why are you talking to him like that? I saw it the other fucking day in Screwfix. There's a big, big black man that man chat to you in Screwfix and that. I see the way his boss was, his manager was dealing with him. And I was thinking to myself, I remember that woman when she was a worker in Screwfix. And now she's the manager. Now she's talking to people a certain way. I'm thinking, yeah, I can't really look at that woman the same no more. Coming by, I used to go in there and chat to her and that. She was cool, you get me? When she was one of the workers and now she's the manager. She's talking to the employees and that her former work colleagues a certain way. I remember one time I was in PC World. This is the PC World in Northampton. And I don't know what was going on, but I remember there was this white guy talking to this Asian guy saying, I told you to do this and I told you to do that right in front of everyone. And that. I'm not saying a man was making a scene. I remember it was during COVID lockdown and I was all wearing a stupid mask and that. And I just thought to myself, he's talking to this, this white man is talking to this Asian guy a certain way. But I guarantee you, this is why I'm such a wise man, because I just flipped the old, I just flipped the reality. I just put a different variable in. So. If that Asian guy was not the employee, if that Asian guy was the floor manager's boss, let's say he was the regional manager, do you think the floor manager would be talking to this Asian guy that way if he was the fucking, if he was the, the regional manager? If the Asian guy was the regional manager, the floor manager or the shop manager would not be talking to him like that. So therefore, he's talking to him in a way which is disrespectful because he wouldn't speak to his manager like that. Managers do all the fucking time, blood. I see it all the time, fam. It's disrespectful, blood. But, uh, let's carry on with the video, man. How would you define bullying? Hmm. So bullying to one person may mean something completely different to the next person. It is quite subjective um, and it can be hard to define or even to recognise when it's happening. What may seem trivial, such as just excluding someone from the coffee run every morning. Over time, that creates a really oppressive working environment. And then you get the more extreme cases where there's verbal, maybe even physical behaviour. Sometimes people are permanently disabled with their mental health and they can never work again. Sadly, we have lots of clients who, who suffer with suicidal thoughts. Sometimes 
people will speak up and say that something is bullying when actually they're really just being managed and there's a performance issue. Assuming it's a reasonable request from your manager, then that is not workplace bullying. But for the most part, if somebody feels as though they're being bullied, that's the important thing. I worked at a restaurant where people used to sing the EDL song. If you're not white, get out. Straight away, you know, they're trying to you're a Muslim Whoa. suicide bomber. The fuck? Um, obviously, I don't know if that was the customers and or the colleagues and that, but that is not, that is not acceptable, man. And a terrorist, but what's he got on his back? I'm proud to be who I am. You know, I'm proud to be a Muslim. You know, I'm proud that, you know, I pray. I just want to get accepted like everyone else. You know, not be judged you know, due to colour, due to height or anything. Just go to work and just have a peaceful day at work. I witnessed people in positions of power just yelling at co-workers in front of other people, demeaning them, making sexual comments. When the environment is like that at the top level, it really does trickle down to every I've seen facet. That. I've seen that before. I've seen a manager stand way too close to a black girl one time. So, you lot know that I had the vending machine thing going on before, innit? And one of my vending machines was at my uni, and one of the vending machines was at a uh, community centre in Islington. Now, in this community centre, obviously, they have people that work in the office. And I've been inside the office and that. But anyway, one of the managers, I don't know if he was based in that office or whatever, but he was in the office, and there was the workers, the girls, they were sitting down. They're like admin or whatever. They're sitting down at the PC or whatever, innit, at their desk. And this white man, who was a manager, walks over to this black girl and he's literally, imagine the black girl sitting right here, yeah? Imagine the black girl sitting right here. My man's standing right here on top of her shoulder. He basically had his dick on her fucking shoulder. And I was pre in the situation, you know, and I was thinking, this guy knows exactly what he's doing. And I noticed she looked to her side, didn't it, yeah? Because obviously he's standing too close, isn't it? See all of that? That's all sexual harassment and that. Please believe... Yeah, there are managers that have fucking raped their employees before. Yeah, it's not just in third world countries in that, because I would expect that madness to go on in third world countries and that. That this has happened in first world countries, America, uh, UK, Canada, and uh, certain parts of like Netherlands and Germany and shit like that. It's happened before. Obviously, few and far between in it. Yeah, but definitely, that um, there, there have been managers that have touched their employees inappropriately, definitely. Yeah, that, that will happen frequently and that. He might just slap her on the arse or whatever. And certain girls, they'll be shook to fire back because they'll think to themselves, oh, I might lose my job and that. Lose your fucking job, blood. You cannot go somewhere and be a fucking victim. You cannot go somewhere and feel uncomfortable. A manager cannot even chat shit to me, blood. You're gonna be in problems. I remember that infamous Holborn job that I was at. The, one of the, I think, yeah, the greatest job I've ever had. I was working at Holbert, then they moved me to another construction site, still working for the same company, but a different construction site. And one of the managers was getting too fresh with me. He said, I can't remember what he was saying, in here. He was just talking mad, didn't he? I said, shut your fucking mouth. Stuck it on him. Obviously, I got fired and that. But blood, that's what you're going to have to do, fam. You cannot talk shit to me, fam. Because on road, I'll break your fucking jaw, blood. I don't play around, blood. If niggas, if men, white man, black man, Asian man, cross the line, niggas get assaulted, blood. I don't fuck about it, blood. You can't test me, blood. I'm not going to have it in work as well. I'm not going to have a manager talk a certain way to me, blood. You're not badder than me on road, so you're definitely not badder than me in the fucking workplace, blood. I'll move to you. If a man cross the line, a man get assaulted. End of story, innit, yeah? You think my neighbours can talk shit to me, blood? None of these people around here can talk shit to me. None of these... Any of these people around here, I can guarantee you, if they thought about coming to my front door, they would think twice, ten times about coming to my front door. Because if they come to my front door, yeah, it's not a case of talking. If they come to my front door, they know I'm going to physically hurt them. It's happened many times around here. I've had to run upon people if you get what I'm trying to say. Yeah? I've had to enter certain premises if you get what I'm trying to say and leave a few casualties behind if you get what I'm trying to say. That's some pussy old gypsy try to come knock my door on a high tip. Buck him up. Fuck him up outside my front door. Don't play about, fam. Man can't test me. I'm a Ross Clark Jamaican, innit, yeah? You can't step to me, blood.
said, no way I'm going to be having people chat shit to me and try to bully me at work. Are you mad? Boy, you're going to be in some problems, blood. But, yeah, that's the way it is, isn't it? I don't give a fuck how good a job is. If a manager chat shit to me, I'm a fire back. And if I get fired, then all oh well, blood. All oh fucking well. My respect is worth more, innit? I'm not going to be sitting there uh, feeling like a fucking victim and that. You can't test me on road, so you could never test me in the workplace. These same people that act like they're big and bad and tough as managers in the workplace and that. Put them on a Ross Clark wing. They turn pussy. Them and they ride voluntary blood. I've seen it. That uh, 60 days, uh, was it 60 days in? You know the program in America where the people then went into jail and that and they was pretending to be convicts and that. You had people who were firemen, people who were police officers, people that were actually uh, prison guards, but in different prisons, go into the prison to pretend to be a prisoner and that. And a lot of them, on road and that, they talk tough. Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm a fireman, I'm an ex-army, I know how to fight and defend myself, I'm a policeman, you get me, I'm a prison guard, and anyone step to me, blood. When they went inside the jail, blood, they were quiet as a fucking mouse. They were on tilt, shook, blood. A lot of people, when they're in their comfort zone, when they're on YouTube, they talk like a bad boy and that. Trust me, anyone that knows me on road knows man's are really about this thing, fam. Ask my neighbours, blood. Ask the man them on road, innit? Ask them fucking Tottenham mutes, blood. They will tell you about man, blood. Anyway, man, run with it, run with it, run with it. Of the workplace, like, I actually found myself becoming a bit toxic as well. I had a bit of a mental breakdown. I think bullying can be so detrimental and can be so sinister because it can be just even those little comments that are meant to chip away at your self-esteem and your self-worth and I think that's where it starts to get really dangerous. I was bullied at work myself and it went on for about two years before I actually felt able to do anything about it. And ultimately I had to walk away because my health suffered so enormously as a result. The pressure, the strain, the extra mental health issues that I suffered really escalated during that formal process. It's trying to speak to somebody in confidence, preferably somebody senior. make sure that those conversations happen early on about which behaviours are acceptable and which are not. There's usually a formal grievance policy that you can follow to escalate your concerns and have them investigated. But sometimes that might not be the right option for the employee in terms of their health. You've got to put your health first and only you know what's best for your health. Don't be afraid to walk away if that is the best thing for you. Keep a diary, keep a log of events, because if you nah, do need to see... Nah, 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 hold on a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't be afraid to walk away if that is the best thing. Obviously, resigning is better than staying in a job and getting bullied, but you know what, yeah, blood. You're better off just going down with a fight, fam. What's the worst that's going to happen? Let's say, for example, you're getting bullied severely at work. Isn't it better... If you know you're going to resign from work, so therefore you won't have a job, isn't it better to tell your manager to go suck his mum? Right. If, if a man pulls out a gun yeah, and is about to shoot you, aren't you better off fighting him and then getting shot dead rather than just taking a bullet in the head without fighting back? Like, come on, blood. If I know I'm going to... If I, if I plan to... And this would never happen, plan to resign because our manager's bullying me and that blood. Do you think our manager could bully me, fam? I'll, I'll tell you, come outside, blood. <laughs> it's just madness, fam. No manager could feel like he can step to me. I'll break your fucking jaw, blood. Telling you, fam, man are not ready for me, innit? But anyway, if I know that, you know, I'm going to resign because I'm getting bullied and that, I, I, what do they call it? Is it a kamikaze attack where... You attack, although you know you're going to die or whatever. Really. I think they call, uh, I think bees or what? I think bees are kamikaze attackers. So basically, kamikaze is like a Japanese word, isn't it? Yeah, and it's basically like, you know, like a suicide bomber. 
I'm going to kill myself in order to kill you. Now, I'm not, don't get twisted. I'm not saying pitch no one. I'm not saying to pitch anybody, in it. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, if you know, yeah, you're going to resign from work, so you're going to be unemployed, why don't you tell your boss, pussy, go suck your mother, innit? Don't talk to me like that. Or if you're a white person, I don't know, innit? Yeah, come up with something else. Go suck your mum, mate, or whatever, innit? Yeah? You think I'm going to just resign from work because a manager's bullying me? No. You have to fire me, blood. I don't, you think I care about references and shit? Man, listen, don't ever do that. That is push your advice, blood. Uh, just resign or just walk away. Nah, fam. Don't go down about a fucking fight, man. You, you're going to be unemployed anyway. So what's the difference, blood? For you, keep a diary, keep a log of events. Because if you do need to seek some legal advice, then that's really helpful. Keep a diary. I keep a diary on each one of my fucking knuckles. Yeah, about keep a diary. You think I'll be writing down shit? Blood, this is, this is what I'm saying, yeah? People are so scared of confrontation. Do you know how many people, like, they even get bullied by, like, their in-law and that. There's certain people that get bullied by their in-law because they don't want to upset their in-law, but fuck the in-law. Listen, let me tell you something right now. I'm an in-law's worst nightmare. I stick it on it. Listen, don't make my girl, don't make my girl's people, yeah, make me meet them, yeah? Because if they're doing something I don't like, I'm going to stick it on them. It's simple as, yeah? I'm the worst fucking... Ah, oh, I'm telling you, blood. Do you know what? This is why a girl has never... In... I've never met a girl's parents before, you know? Never. One girl, but we weren't even seeing each other. We just went out on one day and she thought I was so amazing that she invited me into her mum's yard. And that was quite funny. So, boom. So, me and my auntie and my auntie's brother must have went cinema one time, innit? Yeah, this is in Romford. And I remember there was one black brother and these two mixed race girls. So... After the film was done, I went to the toilet and a bra the black brother came in the toilet as well. So, I don't know if I spoke to him in the toilet or not. But anyway, when we were walking outside, I said to him, which one of these girls are not yours? And he said, she's not my girlfriend. So I went and talked to her, innit? Boom, chatting to her, got her number in it. Boom, went out on a date with her and that. And I can't, I can't remember where we went. I think we went, yeah, in, a, in Romford. The, the mall, they got like an all-you-can-eat Chinese place or something, innit, yeah? So anyway, we went there now, and this is years ago, and this is all fucking... Like, I mean, like, 2014, them times there, innit? This is when I had my blue Honda and that, innit? Boom. Finished eating the meal, dropped the girl back at her yard in a place called Chadwell Heath, which is just on the outskirts of Romford, innit? So boom, she was like, oh, come, let me introduce you to my mum. I was like, all right, cool. Gone in the yard now, innit? Yeah, this is this story's funny, innit? Yeah, so boom. So I'm in the yard now, chatting to the mum. So the girl has invited me into the yard. So it's me, the girl, the mum. The uncle is sitting over there on the other side, and I'm sitting next to the uncle's friend. So anyway, sitting next to the uncle's friend, and the uncle's friend's just moving funny, blood. Like I'm sitting next to him and that, and he's like. Pfft. Like, just moving, like, just moving odd in, like, kissing his teeth and just having attitude. Blood, I'm not even chatting to the you, you know? Like, what's wrong with this guy, innit? So then we, boom, I'm chatting to the mum and that. And she's like, where are you from, South? And I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm just from North, man, Edmonton, innit? She's like, oh, okay, cool, 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 whatever, innit? The mum's kind of a hood thing, innit? Can tell, innit? So, boom. So, um, the, the, the best, the uncle's best friend's still sitting next to man, innit? He's just, just moving mad, like, what's my going for the shoot, innit? I said to him, my friend, have you got a problem with me? He's like, no, 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 I ain't got no problem with you. I was like, all right, cool, innit? So anyway, boom, left the yard now, innit, yeah? After like 30 minutes. And then the girl must have said, like, ah, oh, can you drop me to the shop, like, when, you, when you're when leaving, innit? Yeah? So I was like, oh, yeah, cool. Jump in, innit? So boom, so I dropped her to the shop and I was like, ah, oh, you know what? Yeah, I probably spoiled it, you know, like, sticking it on your 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 uncle's um friend innit? And she's like, nah, 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 nah. My mum likes that shit. She likes hood niggas in it. I was like, oh, okay, cool. But that was funny. Me, I don't have no filter fam. If you I'm gonna go to people's yards and be on my best behaviour that like, no, I'm gonna be my fucking self. If that's not good enough, go suck yourself. Like, I don't care, blood. Don't be this probably why a girl who I know chicks, they they spoken about introducing me to their mum and that, but they're like, nah, I think they, yeah, they're a bit apprehensive and that because of the way I am in it, yeah, no filter and that in it. But this this is what it is, innit? This is why man's the best YouTuber out here, fam. Just no filter in it, yeah, straight raw, fam. 
So yeah, that, that was funny still, I remember that. But anyway, on, on, on to the video. Bullying doesn't have a legal definition, which means it's very difficult to bring a case unless you do have a psychiatric injury, whereas harassment cases can be brought under the Equality Act. A legal definition would really help with those employers who are not prepared to take the action internally and it would give a little bit more protection for people who want to be able to bring a case. Because it is so subjective, I think the courts have struggled to want to define it really strictly. There's a grey area where there's lots of people being subjected to bullying but they have nowhere to go and the, the law doesn't support them. I think the definition has to be focused less on what bullying in the conduct is or is not and more what is the impact on that person. We need to look at early intervention, making sure that managers are trained, they're able to deal with the people issues and not just the technical parts of their roles. But also employers need to look at their working practices. The pressure, the deadlines, the working hours, the hybrid working, the always on. When people are under pressure, their behaviours will change. The more that we have conversations about workplace bullying, the greater the awareness is going to be. And then people will feel able to recognise it earlier, to define it, to speak up against it, not just for themselves but for others as well. Anyway man, that's it man, the video's done in it, yeah. Stand up to Ross Clark bullies in it, yeah. You got nothing to lose, yeah. If you're in a workplace where you feel like your manager's bullying you and that, blood. <laughs> what is the other alternative? You're gonna sit and take it? You might as well fucking fire back. What have you got to lose? Because if you're gonna leave, you might as well leave with some dignity and that. Like, come on, man. But you know what, yeah? What you need to do to combat bullying and that is anyone, anytime anyone says anything or does anything and steps out of line, stick it on them, blood. Make them know, right, if you try a thing, you're going to get some pushback, blood. It's as simple as that. And when you talk to people, look them fucking dead in their eyes. Whether or not it's a, it's a situation or not, you just talk to people. When you talk to people, look them in their fucking eyes. Let them know that you're a serious man or gal, innit? Yeah? That's it, man. That's it, bro. People need to know. People are only bullying you because they know they can get away with it. Because I'm telling you, whoever's bullying you or bullying someone else, there's someone in this world that they wouldn't do that to. So you know what? you got to become that person that they wouldn't do it to. End of story. Stay wise. Done, love.